anything tonight, Kitty. <laughs> The Fred Allen Show, with Fred's guest, Orson Welles. Portland Hopper, Minerva Pius as Mrs. Nussbaum, Alan Reed as Paul Staff Openshaw, Parker Fenley as Titus Moody, the DeMarco Sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And until I show up as Senator Craghorn, my name is Kenny Delmar. This week, ladies and gentlemen, a new book, The Way to Vocabulary, Power, and Culture, was published. We bring you now the new literary lion, whose name appears twice in this work. He's Fred Allen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm laughing already at last week's show. Now, thank you. Thank you, and good evening, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And Kenny, I'm, I'm really happy that you mentioned Dr. Funk's new tome, The Way to Vocabulary, Power, and Culture. You know, I am now a part-time intellectual. If you ever pass Brentano's, look up. I may be in the window. <laughs> well, have you, uh, have you noticed any difference since your name was mentioned in Dr. Funk's book? Well, yes, Kenny. I'm the talk of the literary set in subdued voices for the non. Uh, on on Fifth Avenue yesterday, Elsa uh, Maxwell blew me a kiss. Elsa blew you a kiss? Yes, yeah, she was a little short-winded. It fell in the gutter, but I went over and rescued it. You know, you should expand your vocabulary, Kenny. Get hep to words like pestilated. Pestilated. Uh, what does it mean? Well, thanks to Dr. Funk, I am now in a position to tell you, Kenny. Pestilated means adorned with mosaics. Oh. Uh, what does mosaic mean? Kenny, don't press your luck. I'm only, up, I'm only up to page 12 myself. When I get up to the mosaics, you'll hear from me by phone. Don't let me go on. Mr. Allen! <laughs> thing, you let me stand there reading punctuation. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is new? What, what's new, Portland? Mama said your name is in Dr. Funk's new vocabulary book. That is correct. And I would like to add at this time that Mr. Jack Benny's name does not appear in the book. Hasn't Jack Two people alive? from Waukegan, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the bra- uh, weather's breaking. Hitchhikers are out again. Hasn't Jack a large vocabulary? <laughs> Jack a large vocabulary? Two words he uses on his program. Yike and hmm. <laughs> You know, Benny takes spelling lessons from Red Skelton. I think Jack is pretty smart. Smart? He's always teaching Phil Harris new words. Phil Harris? Phil Harris is the moron's messiah. (laughs) And he is still smarter than Mr. Benny. You know, when Benny finished grammar school, he was so old, instead of a diploma, they gave him a pension. (laughs) Mama said you were the only kid in kindergarten with five o'clock shadow. Well, look, when Benny went to school, he had to have a tutor to get through recess. (laughs) The longest word Mr. Benny knows, you can get out of a no-bo player's mouth sideways. Do you know any big words? Big words? Have you ever heard the word tessellated? Yes. Tessellated means to be adorned with mosaic. Who asked you what it meant? (laughs) Do you want to know what mosaic means? Never mind, never mind. You're reading the book from the back. I can see that. (laughs) Well, touche, and I don't mean that hand lotion, Portland. And speaking of hand lotions, we have a date with a couple of chaps in Allen's Alley. What is your question tonight? Have you heard about the chicken surplus? And if you have, are you eating more chicken to help reduce it? Shall we go? As the saw in the sawmill said to the knot hole, I think I'll buzz along. Ah, it's good to get back to Allen's Alley, Portland. Well, I guess the senator's just finished dinner. There's a big catfish head on the lawn. See the flies? (laughs) Well, let's, uh, let's not. Somebody, I say, somebody now. Yes, I'm Claghorn's the name, Senator Claghorn, that is. You're from the South. When I play bridge, I'm never sitting off. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you men who know Senator's best, it's Claghorn six and seven eighths to three. Now, look, look. I Senator. shot a robin this morning. You shot a robin? I caught the little feathered traitor flying back from the South. Oh. 
Tell me, Senator, are you doing, uh, personally, are you doing anything about this chicken surplus? I'm eating chicken every day. Good. I have my own recipe, chicken a la clagon. Chicken a la clagon. How do you prepare your fowl, Senator? First, I soak my chicken overnight in Kentucky bourbon. Uh-huh. Hard <laughs> for me to go on here now. Yeah. <laughs> Then I boil it in Louisiana corn. Yes. Then I baste it with Mississippi mint julep. Yes. Then I leave it in the skillet over a slow fire for two days. And the chicken's ready? I don't bother with the chicken. No? When I get through lapping up that gravy... Yes? I'm southern fried. So... <laughs> Well, the senator certainly knows his uh, culinary uh, stuff. Well, let's see if Mr. Moody is in. Howdy, Bob. <laughs> you look a little tired, Mr. Moody. Yeah, I had to sit up all night in the pig pen. Oh, really? One of my pigs had tomain. Oh. Well, how could a pig get tomain? I don't know. Must have had a piece of tainted swill or something. <laughs> Is something wrong? Yeah, I got the rheumatism in both arms. Just got a crick. Oh, that's too bad. Well, doesn't the rheumatism bother you working? Just milking. I can't move my arms. Well, how do you milk? Well, first I sit on the stool. Yes? I get a good grip. I see. Then I just hold on. And? The cow jumps up and down. <laughs> well, tell me, Mr. Moody, what about this chicken surplus? Oh, there's only one way to stop a chicken surplus. Nip it in the nest. Nip it in the nest. You mean... Stop the hens from setting, from having more chicken. Well, how? Do what I done last week. What? Well, I put a dozen China eggs in one nest. China eggs? And what happened? That hen hatched out the prettiest set of demi tassy cups I ever seen. So long, <laughs> Well, I've never heard of a hen and her cups before. Oh, well, that's, uh... <laughs> Let's try this next door. No. Not Mrs. Nussbaum. You are expecting maybe Ronald Goldman. Huh? <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Nussbaum, are you doing your bit to help reduce the chicken surplus? I'm sending to Washington a slogan. Oh, what is your slogan? The war is over. We're through with bullets. Now is the time. Start cooking pullets. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Are you, uh, uh, beside the slogan, are you using poultry at home? For every meal in my house, I'm saving chicken. No kidding. For breakfast, I'm making Wheaties. Uh-huh. Concealed in the Wheaties is chicken gizzard. Chicken gizzard. You have coffee, too? Oh, instead of coffee, I'm serving piping hot a cup of chicken fat. Oh, yum, yum. <laughs> For lunch, I'm cooking chicken Chinese style. Chinese chicken? This is egg for young. Uh-huh. Instead of the foo, I'm putting in chicken giblet. Oh, instead of the foo. Well, that should improve the taste. And you serve it uh, Chinese style with chopsticks? No, with drumsticks. Oh, with drumsticks. Well, what is for dinner? Roast chicken stuff. Stuff, huh? Inside the roast chicken is a boiled chicken. Oh. <laughs> and after dinner is coming chicken coffee. Well, what is chicken coffee? Instead of sugar, uh-huh. in the coffee I'm dropping two lumps of white meat. <laughs> well, chicken three times a day isn't your husband complaining? Complaining? Pierre is wanting even more chicken. Well, how do you know? Yesterday, I'm catching him with two blondes. Oh. Well, here we are at the end of Allen Valley. What can happen at this last shanty? Hi, ho, all. It isn't Rudy Valley. It's the poet laureate of Allen Valley. Ah, ah, open Tonight, we are discussing... Tonight, we are discussing the chicken surplus. I know. I have prepared a poem. And what is your chicken surplus quatrain called? In rebuttal. In rebuttal. How does it go? The rooster flew to the henhouse roof and crowed to the world at large his message conceived in rebuttal to the chicken surplus charge. We give up our lives, crowed the rooster, and I speak for each chicken and hen who has died and been fried through the ages to grace the tables of men. Today, you proclaim there's a surplus. Yet to death, you continue to doom us. Your cold storage warehouses glutted with fowl and none, none to consume us. The real reason there's a surplus of poultry is the population has shrunk in New York. So don't go around blaming us chickens. Go take it up for the stock. Thank you, Paul Staff. And now from the fowl, Paul DeRolla, Paul Staff. 
Return with pleasure to the Chickory Chick Choir, the five DeMarco sisters, accompanied by Maestro Al Goodman and his surplus symphonist, the DeMarco Sing Atlanta G.A. <laughs> to get busy. Our guest tonight is Orson Welles. Is the gold mesh carpet ready? The gold carpet is ready? Yeah. The man from Symphony brought the jade microphone. The jade microphone. I told him the turquoise microphone. <laughs> get, the, get the preparation we have to make for Orson. Did you rehearse the Orson Welles fanfare? Oh, gosh, I forgot. Mr. Goodman, with that special Orson Welles fanfare, have your men chew on a little sensen before they blow their trumpets. <laughs> Mr. Wells likes to smell something as he comes on. In fact, I would... Hey, this must be awesome now. Mr. Goodman, the fanfare, please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. Stop it. Stop it, please. You're not Orson Wells. No, no, I'm Mr. Wells' personal psychiatrist. Yes? I'm afraid Mr. Wells cannot appear on your program tonight. Can't appear? No, Mr. Wells is suffering from a complete breakdown of personality. But, Doctor... You are a doctor. In, uh, some states, yes. <laughs> doctor, you mean the great Orson Welles, the brash, impetuous exhibitionist? Today, he is a cringing, beaten note Oh, what happened? It was that role he played in his new picture, Tomorrow is Forever. Yes? He appeared as Eric Kessler, a frustrated elderly Dutchman. Yes? It took eight months to make the picture. For eight months, Mr. Wells lived as Eric Kessler. Uh Uh-huh. He still thinks he's Kessler. Eric Kessler. He has Kessler's Dutch dialect. He has Kessler's inferiority complex. Orson Wells with an inferiority complex? (laughs) 
I can't believe it, Doctor. Oh, you must help him, Mr. Allen. I have Mr. Wells in a rest home on 52nd Street. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Doctors Leon and Eddie's the place I've seen. Well, doctor, what can I... Uh... If you could induce Mr. Wells to face an audience again, he might conquer his phobia. I shall do it. Let's go to the rest home, Doctor. Let's go. But there's no one in here, Doctor. Shh, quiet. The Wells is hiding in the closet again. <laughs> Be careful, Mr. Allen. If you upset him, this Kessler complex returns. He starts talking Dutch. Good luck, Mr. Allen. Thank I'll you, go. Doctor. Yeah, the pitiful case. Orson Wells hiding in a closet. Orson! Orson! Come out of the closet, Orson! <laughs> Nobody will hurt you. Come out, Orson! Ah, the door is opening. Yes, please. Awesome. Well. Awesome. You remember me, Fred Allen? Was you ever in Cincinnati? <laughs> Look, Awesome. Excuse me, please. The name is Eric. Eric Kessler. But Awesome, I'm your old friend. Was you ever in Cincinnati? <laughs> Austin, you must snap out of it. Oh, everything is so confused. Think hard. Back in the dim, hazy past, you knew a man named Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Think. Think. Orson Welles. I seem to recall. Orson Welles used to walk down Fifth Avenue with a marmot set riding his arm side saddle. Uh -huh. A fawn prancing by his side and 20 giant butterflies on silken leashes flew ahead, spelling out the name Orson. <laughs> I saw Orson Welles one day carrying a cane. It was the hind leg of a gazelle. <laughs> Orson used to strut into the automat, stand in front of those little windows, and say, Open. Every single window would fly open. <laughs> well, listen, Mr. Kessler, that man with the 20 butterflies and the hind leg of the gazelle was you. You were Orson Welles. You're still Orson Welles, star of stage, screen, and radio. Fred. Yes? You left our television. Ah! <laughs> That's the old Orson, the old blowhard coming back. <laughs> you mean, you mean I'm, I'm not Kessler, the weakling? I am Orson Welles, the blowhard? Yes. <laughs> you have got to convince yourself. Say to yourself, I am Orson Welles. I am Orson Welles. Good, good. Say it again. I am the great Orson Welles. I am the great Orson Welles. Let it ring out. I am the great Orson Welles. You're cured. The old power, the old ego. <laughs> The old ham is back. <laughs> now you know who you are. I am Eric Kessler. Austin. <laughs> Were you ever in Cincinnati? Austin, you're slipping. Austin. Oh, it's no use, Fred. It's nice of you to try and help, but now if you'll excuse me, I'll go back into my little old closet. Now, Austin, we, we can conquer this complex. If you give one performance in public, your past would return. A long time ago, we did a play together, remember? Oh, yes, it was Les Miserables. Let's do it again. Oh, Fred, I'm frightened. Mm, buck up, Austin. All right, if you insist, I'll do the play on one condition. Yes, Austin. You must be the star. You must do all the acting. All the acting. Just all... let me appear for a second, no more. Good. <laughs> yeah. If you only speak one line, it will bolster your courage. Now, as we start, you can announce the play. Fred, it means mentioning my own name. I'm afraid. Steal yourself. You must conquer this inferiority complex. You can do it, Orson. Music, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> Is that all right? Can I go ahead? All right, go ahead, Orson. Victor Hugo's immortal story of a soul transfigured and redeemed through suffering. This is an Orson Welles production. Radio version of Les Miserables prepared by... Orson Welles. Directed by... Orson Welles. Starring... <laughs> Orson Welles. Orson Welles will be assisted by... Oh, now, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Fred, did you hear I said my name? I said my name. And you said it plenty, too. <laughs> What about my name? Well, I announced you, Fred. The music cut in too quickly. Now, watch that music, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> Orson, you said you wanted me to be the star of the play. Now, if you're going to take all the credit... Orson. Orson. Were you ever in Cincinnati? Yeah, he's slipping again. I Orson. am Eric Kessler. No, no, you are Orson Welles. That's right, I am, I am. I'm Orson Welles. Well, what happened? 
You raised your voice to me, Fred. Remember my condition. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let's start the play. The play? The play? What play? Play Miserable. You oh, remember? Yes. yes, I am Jean Valjean, the hunted convict. Yes. You are Javert, the detective, that merciless minion of the law, always on my trail. Yes. You do all the acting. All the acting. Yes. I'm the star. Yes. You just come on for a second. That's right. Fine. Let's go. The first scene is a dingy garret in the slums of Paris. Uh-huh. The story opens, I, Jean Valjean, am hiding out. I think I have escaped you. Uh-huh. As we first see Jean Valjean, he is at last, Jean Valjean, you are safe. There is no cause to fear this Javert who has hounded you so long. Javert, your nemesis, that merciless bloodhound, always in pursuit of you, has finally thrown off the track, completely baffled. <laughs> but hark, that sound upon the stairs, footsteps, those same plodding footsteps. Ah, uh-huh. Javert. What is to be done? Ah, this window. Jean Valjean will never be taken. Goodbye! Javert! Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Stop the music, Mr. Goodman. Fred, (laughs) did you hear that? That was I, I, the old Orson Welles. I'm not afraid anymore. No. Now I'm starting to get a little frightened. Now, look, Orson. Later, Fred. Now we start the second scene. Never mind the second scene. What about the first scene? Oh, it was wonderful, Fred. I'm getting that old feeling again. And I'm getting that old business again. (laughs) Orson, you said I was going to be the star. But you are the star, Fred. What stole that whole scene? What? It was that knock on the door. And who knocked on that door? Javert. Never mind Javert. Well, you motivate the entire story. If you hadn't knocked at that door, I'd still be in the garret. We'd have no plan. Now, don't give me that. I'm supposed to do all the acting. I haven't even had one line. But you ever invented that? <laughs> Take it easy, Orson. Watch that, Fred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will. Well, what, uh, what happens now? Well, in the second scene, you dominate the whole thing. I am just the stooge. The stooge. Well, that's more like it. What is the second scene? Well, it's years later. This time, you, Javert, have me trapped. Cosette Fabantou, a demimonde, is concealing me in the back room of a bistro. I, Jean Valjean, am pacing up and down. Jean, will you stop pacing? Do Jean up and down. This is the end, Cosette, my farewell to freedom. Instead of liberty, waits the galley crew, the iron collar, the chain is before the dungeon, the plank beds, all the horrors I know so well. To submit morning and evening to the hammer of the roundsman who tests the feathers. Finally, short. The net is tightening. <laughs> Javert. Quick, Jean Valjean, through the trap door. Merci, Cosette. Jean Valjean will never be taken again. Au revoir. Javert. Now, hold it, hold it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop the music. Now, look. Look. now look, Austin. You were magnificent. <laughs> Never mind that. You stole that scene right out from under my nose. Now, look, let me tell you. Yeah, that, that suspense, man. Austin, please. I, I've seen Javert played a hundred times. The Theater Guild, Moscow Art Theater, at Grossinger's. <laughs> Dan Johnson has played Javert. But I've never heard of Javert get the tone out of that police whistle that you got tonight. Now, look, Austin, I don't mind playing the schnook to help restore your ego. <laughs> But now my ego is going. In two acts, all I've done is knock on a door and blow a whistle. For sure, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. The next, uh, go ahead with the play. The next scene is all yours, Fred. You start to say, you trail me through the sewers of Paris. Uh-huh. You finally corner me single-handed. And there we stand, face to face. I just have a few words, and then you speak. I finally speak. Well, it's about time. Let's go. <laughs> Hell situation. Alone in this sewer. Wrapped like a rat. The gloomy darkness. This narrow archway above the head. These two slimy corridor walk. The buck. That's sloshing through the buck. Javert. At last you cornered me, Javert. Don't talk, Javert. <laughs> Before you seal my doom, I would speak for the last time. You will never take Jean Valjean alive, Javert. <laughs> the water in this sewer is rising. I am six feet nine. You, Javert, are four feet two. <laughs> the water rises. No, no, not yet, Javert. Don't speak. 
the water. Higher, higher, higher. Now, Javert, you have Jean Valjean at your mercy. Pronounce my doom. Now, Javert, speak. Speak. <laughs> Radio Service.